Hello replay viewers. This is a sight that I will never see again in my lifetime. Hello Jelly Belly. Hello Paul. I was just starting to say this is a sight. I, I hope the video is good. I did a speed test and it, it seemed like it might be good enough. I'll never see this sight again in my lifetime. There's supposed to be... <clears throat> I'm standing at the, at the edge of a lock chamber. There's supposed to be some gates here. Jelly Belly. Well, if you put... Oh, Jelly Bean. Yeah. Hello, I think you Jelly Bean, you're about to go to bed. So now you have the night shift. This is a lock chamber, and normally you have gates at both ends. I have to watch my step, I don't want to plunge into the water. Normally there's gates at that end, and those gates are in place. <clears throat> and you can see it's uh, under maintenance. There's no gates here. Oh my goodness, that will keep you going. So what they do every uh, every two or three or four years, for, there's, there's in this lock system, there's two gates at this lock and two gates at the other end. Hi, Rich. So that's a total of uh, four gate systems. Uh, I was chased away by the, by the police. I'm in a new place. I had to move. And so what we have over here are the lock gates. These come out, this particular set comes out every 12 years or so. So um, for maintenance, hello, hello. <clears throat> so I'll walk down the edge of the... Uh, I've never been on this side of the lock before. I'm wearing, the, there's only one life jacket here. I didn't bring one with me. And to cross the, uh, the little, the, the gates up ahead where I'm gonna cross over. These were sandblasted recently, but then they didn't paint them. There's uh, some welding that has to be done. And so before the welding can happen, they have to put it out to bid. And that's taking forever. So these gates here are lying on, on on these concrete posts and you can see this whole lock system was built with this space in mind that every every six years or so a pair of gates would come out and sit on those concrete uh, posts yeah these are parts of the lock so what you're looking at here these are the lock gates in place no I'm not a historian the uh, the person who works over here is a historian that's Robert so normally lock locks have gates at both ends. These gates are in place. These gates are removed for their... Uh, these gates haven't been out for 17 years. There was a delay. Robert! Yeah. Jelly Bean is saying hello to you. Jelly? Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean. Here. On no, on, <laughs> on, on my video. Oh, hey, what's up? Okay, now you can say what's up. Do you want to play the conch shell? Oh God, it sounds like hell. If you're not ready, then I won't do it. Stand by, folks. Thank you, Robert. You need a higher pitch one. He's going to pick out another conch shell. Robert collects conch shells from boats passing through. Hi, Karen. Pitch that. Give me a better one. All right, he wants he wants a better one. If you're going to the Bahamas, <laughs> if you're going to the Bahamas, bring back a good conch shell. So this is where I started. I'm going to walk across the other lock gates. So <laughs> these lock gates are out for maintenance. They normally get maintained every 12 years. You got one on a country Ohio radio. Uh, no, what? You got a conch shell from a contest. All right, let's make some progress. Uh, that was an unexpected treat. This is part of the reinforcing system. Hello, hello to uh, Chad. And this is part of the reinforcing system that holds the, the gates from flexing too much. I've never been over, over on this side of my life. I've never seen lock gates removed, and I'll never see them again. Uh, because if the gates are removed, obviously you can't pass through the lock. So why would anybody come here? No, no jumping. I don't want to get wet and have to crawl out a slimy ladder. So we're going to walk up to the other end of the lock. <clears throat> Normally I lock through here and then there's a nice free dock over there. I go into the free dock. Well, I'll show you what there is. We'll get to the end and have a better sun angle. A nice, free, nice place to tie up. And Robert, who you just saw playing the conch shell, if you're going through here no normally, will um, let the water, he'll close the gates, let the water in, uh, I look like a person. Yes, I'm very mysterious. 
Uh, he let the water up. All the boats that are in here are now trapped between the two gates. And then he plays the conch shell and gives some history. And then eventually lets you through. But then all the boats go through. He has to close these gates again. And hopefully uh, next time I'm here, all this will be in operation. Uh, he closes the gates, walks over from that side to this side. Uh, no, they, they don't open. They, uh, they, they pivot. This is a V here. I'm going to show you uh, bowls. I'm going to walk across this right in just a second. So he walks across. Normally his car is parked here. And he drives down the street. And he goes to the bridge. And he also opens the bridge. So there's no point in going through here at any speed because you have to still wait for Robert to drive up to the bridge. These motors <coughs> will lift up a metal plate. There's four, usually at least two are working, sometimes three are working. Uh, chances are four, four are probably not working. These, this whole system is very old. See, this is what I look like. I'm at the junction of the two gates. You can see the water is, is eight feet different in height. And here is where a little bit is spilling out through a crack. Can you see the water spilling out? Yep, me and my shadow. Do not drop the phone. Hold on tight. So that's eight or eight or ten feet. I think it's at high tide, so I think it's about eight feet height height change. This is all fresh water. The other side sometimes is salty. <clears throat> Oh, it smells great here. There's no bad smell. There's, there's some circulation. So this is, this is one of the two <clears throat> control booths. And because, because the locks aren't working, it's all shut up. This is one of, the, uh, one of the motors that will pull this lock gate that's closest to me. And you'll notice it's uh, covered up with mesh. It's covered up with mesh because it needed maintenance at one point and you had to sort of get down inside to get to the part that needed fixing. And when Robert was doing that, he found a giant snake. So that wasn't a good experience. Yeah, see this, see this mesh right here in this covering. This is all to keep the snakes out. He doesn't want to find another snake inside the, uh, the motor that sometimes need, needs maintenance. So, so that was a bit of a surprise. Of course, you, you start to do maintenance and all of a sudden you have to deal with the giant snake. I, he'll tell us in a minute <clears throat> how tall the, uh, how long the snake was. Snakes are cool. No, this is not Utah, this is Virginia. I really love this spot. Robert is, is a wonderful person. He has lots of, lots of stories to tell and he's lonely. There's nobody here. This, this whole lock system's been out of commission. Uh, not where you work or sleep. You don't want sleep, yeah, I don't want snakes. This whole lock system's been out of commission since last October, I think, when there was uh, rains and hurricanes. And then this, this scheduled maintenance uh, happened. So anyone, no one can travel this canal. How do you, how do you think you would get up in the lock? <laughs> there's no gates at the end. You'd come in and there's no way to rise up. You couldn't, there's no, no gates to close. So normally the gates would close. The ones over here are usually there. And the gates would close and the valves would, would be shut at that end. And the gates would shut and then you come around to this end and Robert has to walk back and forth. It's a busy job. You have to catch all the boats coming in and get them tied up. Then he'd eventually close the other end, come up to here into that little control booth, raise the, push the buttons to raise the wickets. The gates would uh, let the water pour in. Yes, he's the gatekeeper. How did how did you want to, well you want to interview Robert? People are asking how did you get this job? Wait till somebody died. He he waited till somebody died. How long is it out of operation? Well, they started this process in, I'm going to say, January. Yeah. It should have been back up by now. But you want to be on video? No. Okay, because, well, he doesn't want to be on video. Now is out of commission. They don't care. There's no hurry. How many boats fit in here? Depends on the size of the boats. How long is the lock? 300 by 52. There we go. 
Just show the conch. The, uh, the most boats I've ever had in here at once. I had 47 small craft between 16 and 26 foot and one sailboat about 28 foot long. So 48 vessels in this lock chamber at one time is my record. And some were tied up to each other. They were all tied up to each other. They were all tied up to each other. <laughs> my friend Karen in Maine loves your accent. Oh. She's in Maine. Come on, come on down to Virginia. <laughs> Karen wants to, how did, how did that fit? Well, you get some boats on both sides. And then more boats come in and they tie up to the first boats and so on and so forth until it's completely full. Yep. And the boats in the front, that's not the, not the place you want to be because the water starts boiling in. Karen would love to visit. The water starts okay. boiling in and there's lots of surges and hey, look, you're getting a delivery. Nice. I know. So, uh, but it's all, it's, only eight feet right now, and actually it's more like nine because yeah. it's high tide. It's high tide, Paul. So this is this lock works no matter what the tide is, but you have to have lock gates at both ends. Right now this lock is not a lock, it's just a dead dam. end. It's a dead end. It's a dam. It's a dam, it's a dam, yes. So here's the conch shell collection. So every time someone comes through in the fall, Robert will say, are you going to the Bahamas? And then they say yes, which is almost what they all say. They says, will you bring back a conch shell for me? So this is his collection. If there was no lock at all, then the Dismal Swamp Canal would not exist. And this body of water on the other side of the lock would not exist. Would not exist. It would just be, be, dry, land. be dry land. Uh, it bowls, yes, that is an issue because at the, when the, when the, the, water here is let in there's a lot of turbulence and it swirls back for a considerable distance Robert lives he does not live in this little house but he lives lives nearby and this is a very strange job because you have to commute from the lock to the bridge that's that's not a normal situation but he also has to deal with a dam to uh, control the water height in this uh, canal so hopefully this place gets fixed up sometime this summer and it's back in operation and you get, yes, damn! <laughs> I'm getting the, the strangest, it, it, it's sort of hard work. The locks only operate four times a day, but you're busy. It takes about 20 minutes for the water to come in, 25 minutes. Lock is usually about a half hour. Yeah, and then you have to deal with the bridge and then then the bridge goes up and boats from here go through the bridge and if there's boats on the other side then they come this way. So you can have, have yeah, if, if, if there's boats going both ways you're continuously busy. Uh, this lock system was out of service from the Hurricane Matthew in October. And yes, Robert is lonely. He likes to have a visitor. All right, so this is another good question. How much water goes through the lock in one cycle? Depends on where the uh, tide is. Let's Lockings are between 8 and 12 feet, so between 800,000 and 1.4 million. Robert is a historian. He knows a lot of stuff. That's a large amount of water. This whole chamber Damn. will fill up. You can see the, uh, yes he does know a lot, you can see the, uh, the, the dark. That's how high the water gets when this chamber is full. Metric. Uh, three, three meters is is nine 12 feet. is nine feet yep. at least three meters maybe four yep that's right yep so there's a lot of turbulence there's a lot of pressure here yeah. when the water when the gates are when the the uh i'm gonna call the them wickets the pollen line shows you where how high the tide gets right can you see this part well we have a reflection too so you can see how the tide is is pretty high right now maybe it's about half half out that's right yes i uh jelly belly bean uh you were reconnecting while he said how much water um, I hope this place gets put back in service. The, uh, the trouble was, was several fold. There was the hurricane had many, many trees fall over into the canal and that's been rectified, but there was so much water surging through the whole system that there's massive uh, buildups of sandbars and even a little skiff. Sand dunes. Sand dunes. Sand dunes. This is Virginia. It sure is. Look at the map. This is part of Chesapeake, also known as Deep Creek, in this little hamlet. 
and there was so much water surging that the, the banks got eroded, uh, sand was washed into all kinds of places from, from adjoining ditches, and that's going to be a project. Uh, this canal runs mostly east and west. So here's, it's almost, it's getting down to 12 o'clock, so I'm kind of looking south. So that's kind of looking, looking west. Yeah, but that's kind of like an east or westbound lane on the highway, not necessarily going in that direction. Right, and it's how, 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 and south. goes how far? So this, it's 22 this, miles in between locks. This, this lock is at mile 11. 11. And the other lock is at mile 33. 33. 33. I was going to say 32, but that might be the bridge. 33. 33. And that's statute miles, not nautical miles. That 22 statute miles, 20 nautical miles. And if you're asking for metric, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, no, that's not so hard. I can do it in my head. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be about 38 uh, kilometers. Well, if you watch my scopes, you'll, you'll pick up a few nautical facts. You can see this is a great place to stop and visit. I almost always, 11 miles to the bay. No, no, that's a good guess, but it's 11 miles to mile zero, which is in, in Norfolk Harbor. Right, so it's about another mile to the bay. So then, well, no, it's more than that. No, a lot more than that. It's like eight. No. You have to go past all those shipyards and, and the naval base. The naval base, all you got. It's another mile. This is my home, damn it. No, no. Well, I've, I've been through there. All right, Robert and I are going to have a discussion when this scope is over. And I'm going to show him on the map that it's, 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 it's like eight miles nah. to go out. <laughs> you, know, you know where the hospital is? Hospital Point. Yeah, that's mile zero. Yeah. Then you have to go all the way out to the uh, entrance, to the it's jetties. not that far. <laughs> I see my pontoons out there to go fishing all the time. Well, I'm glad your boat seems to be in a time warp or something. <laughs> It's got a 25 horsepower motor on it. Well, see, that makes... Uh-oh. Good. This discussion has been put on hiatus for a second. <laughs> Fact brawl. <laughs> uh, the reason I know this is I have to suffer that long trip. And it's in my GPS. Let's see if I can get a, get a good view of this sign, shooting into the sun. So here's, here's more of his conch collection. Here's the, uh, the boat hook. Hello from Spain. Here's the boat hook he uses when a boat comes in and it's low tide. They have to pass their lines up, so they use he uses this boat hook to uh, to reach down. Do I know if it has if there are other locks? So there's a lock at this end. My voice is getting a little hoarse, and there's a lock at the other end. Um, this is the alternate route. It's it's been disabled since October. No, no. Okay, I didn't understand. On Long Island, are there any locks on the Long Island? There is a lock on Long Island, and it's a kind of a strange one on the south shore. I think it's a kind of a one-way lock. I'd have to look it up. Uh, I'd never go along the south shore, but you'd have to look. It's, it's closer to Coney Island than it is to the other side. Um, let's see if I can see this with the sun. Can you, can you read this? I'm shooting into the sun. Can you read that mileage chart into the sun? That's showing up okay. Hardly okay. That's not going to work. Yeah, I'm going to be passing through New York. I'll be uh, up there in, in many weeks. Uh, he's on the phone, so I don't know if he has or not. I don't think alligators live in fresh water. So, you probably wouldn't see the alligators right here. Yeah, it is starting to get warmer. At least temporarily. You might see alligators there, because that's somewhat saltish water. But I don't know. I'll ask them next time. Alright folks, I've shown you the lock. There's not much else to see, except my little boat there floating. I made a special trip just to come up here. A boat, a man in a little rowboat was uh, was uh, calling me on the radio and telling me this the lock is closed. Well, yeah, I was trying to shout back that I know the lock's closed. I've just come up to visit Robert. He's been off for five days, so I made a special trip up. I'm going to I'm gonna have to leave here this afternoon and go back to where I was because we're having a, a tremendous a tremendous storm is coming tonight, and I want to be in a better place than, than this. Yeah, you're welcome. And hopefully next time, I really hope that the... Uh, this whole system is fixed, 
and put back into operation, there's, there's some possibility that it's going to cost too much money to, to get all the sand out of it. And they might just say, that's the end of it. Everyone has to go the other way. I, and I hope that's not the case. So everyone, thanks for popping in. And we'll see you next time. Adios. Yeah, look up uh, Rich. Uh, look up Route 6, Inter, uh, Interstate 64 is just uh, north of here. So if you can find, find that, where it crosses some water, then go a little bit west and south, and you'll find the spot. All right, see you all later. Bye. Bye-bye, folks.